Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle, finally. Okay, so if you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like this video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. And let's get started. We have two congruent semicircles with radius 1. They're inscribed in two triangles with a common altitude as shown. So we do have a right triangle, which is BAC, all right? And BA is equal to two, okay? So it's given, right? This is two. And we're supposed to find BC. And the semicircles are congruent. And the radius is one. So we have a lot of information, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start by marking these lengths here. So that's one and that's one. I'm not going to mark the other one because we're going to use it for something else. Okay, cool. Let's make a connection here. I'm going to go ahead and drop a perpendicular that way. And then another perpendicular this way. As you know, these are perpendicular lines because the tangent line is always perpendicular to the radius at that point. Awesome. This is also one and this is also one. Beautiful. Now, what am I going to do next? I'm going to call this length here x. As you know, this is also two because those are two tangents drawn from outside. And let's call this length y here. Now, from Pythagorean theorem, you know, I don't need to explain in detail, hopefully, right? The hypotenuse is going to be square root of x squared plus one. And here it's going to be the square root of y squared plus one. Nice. So our goal is to find BC, which of course contains Y in it. So if we can find those lengths, we can add them up, so on and so forth. Now, what are we going to use here? We're going to use a very nice tool that's used in geometry a lot, in Olympiad problems, in competition problems, in pretty much all types of geometry problems, we use it. It's a really good tool and it's called similarity. Okay, now, we're going to use similarity here. How? Well, if you call this angle alpha, and let this, uh, let's call this one beta, then alpha plus beta is 90 degrees. Therefore, this is also going to be beta. So we have like an alpha beta 90 triangle, alpha beta 90 triangle, and they are similar. So let's start with one of the triangles. Let's, let's start with the larger one with the alpha. Uh, across from alpha, we have the two. In the smaller one, across from alpha, we have the one. So we kind of have like a two to one ratio, you can tell, right? And then go back to the big one. Uh, what is across from beta? Uh, in the larger triangle, it's going to be 1 plus square root of x squared plus 1. I'm talking about this length here. And then in the smaller one, across from beta is x, so we're going to put the x in the denominator. So we do have a ratio here, or you can call that a proportion, I guess. Let's cross multiply. 2x is equal to 1 plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And we're going to square both sides, but first, let's go ahead and isolate the radical. Awesome. Now we're going to square both sides and obviously when you do, you're going to get rid of the radical and you can solve this equation. Awesome. So when you square the left hand side, you're going to get 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Right hand side is easy, x squared plus 1. What's really cool about this is that the 1 cancels out. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so you can go ahead and cross out the 1s and you'll end up with something nicer. Put the x squared on the left hand side and that should give you 3x squared because you're going to subtract it. Beautiful. And then here you can pull out an x and that should give you 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Obviously, x can't be 0. You don't want that, right? So 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 4 thirds. Beautiful. Now, we found x. We're going to find y. Okay. How can we find y? Hopefully in a similar way, right? Can we use similarity? Let's call this angle theta. And then in the big one, we also have the theta. Okay, now, what am I going to do? And this is going to be 9 to minus theta, right? Okay, cool. And this is going to be 9 to minus theta as well. So you see, this triangle is basically similar to the larger one, the largest triangle here. Make sense? Okay, cool. Because this is a 90 degree angle. Awesome. So we can use similarity. The largest one has... 2 across from theta. So let's go ahead and write the 2 here. Maybe use this area so we're going to be closer. And then so the theta is 2. In the smaller one, theta is 1. So again, we have the 2 to 1 ratio, but this time we're comparing different triangles, obviously, right? Okay, cool. And in the larger one, what is across from um, 90 minus theta? That will be the whole thing here, AC. What is AC? Well, AC is equal to 1 plus 
the square root of x squared plus 1 plus 1 plus the square root of y squared plus 1. But guess what? We already know the value of x. x is equal to 4 thirds. So the square root of uh, 4 thirds squared is 16 ninths plus 1 is equal to 25 ninths. If you take the square root, that's going to be 5 thirds plus 1. It's going to be 8 thirds plus 1 is going to be 11 thirds. So this is 11 thirds, this part, right? So you're just going to add the square root of y squared plus 1 to it. Make sense? Okay, awesome. Let's check it one more time. Square root of uh, x squared plus 1. 4 thirds squared is uh, 16 ninths, 25 ninths, 5 thirds, 8 thirds, and 11 thirds. Cool. It checks. So we have um, 11 thirds plus the square root of y squared plus 1 for the 90 minus theta. And in the smaller one, the 90 minus theta is y. Okay. Awesome. So now we have a similar equation for y, and we can hopefully solve y from here. Let's go ahead and do the cross multiplication. 2y is equal to 11 thirds plus square root of y squared plus 1. Isolate the radical. This time I'm going to put it on the left hand side, which kind of looks a little, I don't know, I guess better. Maybe not. Okay. And then we're going to square both sides. Now, what happens when we square both sides? Well, something good happens because we get rid of the radical. And similarly, we get something nicer. y squared plus 1 is equal to 4y squared minus. Now, when you multiply these two things together, you're going to multiply them. You're going to get 22 over 3y, but you're going to double that, right? So it's going to be 44 over 3y. And then you're going to get 121 over 9. Okay, awesome. So that's the square uh, of 2y minus 11 thirds. What we can do is we can put everything on the right hand side and simplify this more. So let's go ahead and do that here. We're going to get 3y squared minus 44 thirds y. Now I have, okay, I've, I've taken care of this. Now we're going to take care of this. 121 over 9 minus 9 over 9. What is that going to be? 121 minus 9. That's going to be 112, right? So that's going to be a positive 112 ninths. Great. Okay. And this is equal to zero. Nice. Now, what I can do is, obviously, that's going to help, right? Uh, multiply everything by 9. That's going to give me 27y squared minus. I'll get an uh, extra 3 there. 44 times 3 is equal to 132y plus 112 is equal to 0. Beautiful. Now, what am I going to do next? Solve for y, right? Okay. How do you solve for y? Well, to solve for y, and by the way, after solving for y, we still need to find this length, right? How do you find that length? Well, here's the thing. If you know the side lengths, right, then you can basically, uh, once you find the y, uh, you know AC, and you can actually use um, the similarity rule. Uh, instead of using the Pythagorean theorem. I mean, there are two ways to go about it, but anyway, let's fi find y first. Okay, how do you find y from here? Well, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. I mean, what am I talking about? <laughs> the quadratic formula, okay. y is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, oh man, that's a large number, minus 4ac. Okay, cool. All over... 2 times a, which is 54. Nice. Okay, so we're going to find the y value from here, but let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit because this, these numbers are too large. Okay, how can we simplify this? Well, think about uh, factoring 132 here. 132 is obviously 2 times um, 66, right? So I can kind of factor it as uh, 2 times, let me do this, okay, 2 times uh 66, and then I could probably write it as 2 times uh, 3 times 11 uh, times 2. So it's, we can write it as 2 squared. So in other words, I'm doing the prime factorization. And then if I do it for, this, for the other piece, 2 squared, 3 cubed, and 112 can be written as, let's see, uh, four, 4 times 28, right? Is that correct? Okay. And then 4 times 4 times 7, which is 2 to the fourth power uh, times seven. And this is going to give you basically two to the sixth, three to the third, and seven. But this guy is squared here. So when you square that, it's going to give you two to the fourth, 
uh, 3 squared and 11 squared. Obviously, 11 isn't or 7 is not a perfect, um, common factor. So, but what I can do is I can basically pull out uh, 2 to the 4th and 3 to the 2nd, which is actually pretty good because that means we're taking out like a 144, which is nice, right? Okay, cool. Uh, that would be good. But And when you factor that out, inside you're going to have, oh, that's actually pretty much everything here except for the 11 squared. That's kind of nice. Minus, we have a leftover 2 squared, 3, and 7. Let's see if this number is less than 11 squared. I'm curious. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is uh, 12, 12 times 84, nice. So it's 181, what am I talking about, 121 minus 84, and that should be 37. Beautiful number, right? Okay, awesome. So, basically, to keep a long story short, we can write this as, we can write the y as 132 plus minus the square root of 144 times 37. Isn't that nice? Okay, beautiful. Great simplification, and then we can take this out. We, if you take out the 144, it's gonna be a 12. All right, let's see what happens next. That's gonna be a 12, 37 inside the radical, and 54. Okay, common factors. Uh, 54 is divisible by threes and twos, but not by four. Um, three is an option, two is an option, so that means we can divide by six, beautiful. And if you divide 132 by 6, uh, what do you get? Well, uh, you get 11, I think, right? 11, no, I mean 22. That's what I meant. Okay, divide by 6, you get 22 plus minus 2 times the square root of 37 over 9. Now, you might be thinking, like, which one am I going to use, right? Well, 37, square root of 37 is about uh, 6. Pretty close. 2 times 6 is about 12. So we're kind of looking at something like this. 12, 22 plus minus 12 over 9. So if you add them up, you get 34 over 9, which is about roughly 5, right? Okay. Um, nope, that's not 5. What am I talking about? Okay, sorry. Um, 34 over, uh, it's about, I think, 4-ish. Maybe a little less than 4. But if you do the 10 over 9, that's going to be close to 1. Okay. So... Do you want the y to be close to 1 or close to 4? Let's take a look at the picture. Just eyeball it, you know. Well, obviously, y is definitely greater than 1. And so I'm going to go with the positive version. That looks more reasonable. And obviously, algebraically, you can prove that, A, the only one that works is the positive one. But anyways, we're just going to keep it simple here. Okay, cool. So this is the y value. Nice. I got the y value. I got the x value. What am I going to do next? Okay, let me tell you what we're going to do next. Uh, we're going to use these uh, two of these values here. Now let me go ahead and do something here. Let me take this little piece here and then move it up. Here we go. I just want to, you know, I just want to put this up here so that I can, you know, and it's not easy to scroll down and use it at the same time. And where's my X value? Oh, X is 4 third. That's easy to do, right? Okay, so let me clean up this area and then I'm gonna go ahead and set up an equation for BC because our goal is to find BC, all right? So let me go ahead and clear this area. I don't wanna clear the Y. So that's my Y value. And then, uh, so let me clear this area. All right, cool. Now we know the Y value and we know the X value. X is equal to 4 thirds, right? Okay, cool. X is 4 thirds. X is equal to 4 thirds. Nice. Okay. Now, what am I going to do to find the value of BC? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We do know um, the value of... Well, actually, you can keep it simple. Okay, you want to do it that way? Fine. We can use the Pythagorean theorem instead of similarity. I mean, that's kind of one way to approach it. But I think you will find this probably more helpful... I'm thinking, oh, it doesn't really matter. No big deal. Okay, fine. We're going to find AC and we know AB and then we're just going to use Pythagorean theorem. Nice. Okay, cool. So what is AC? AC is equal to, AC is equal to, remember we calculate that already, 11 over 3, right? 11 over 3 plus the square root of y squared plus 1. Okay, what is that going to be? Well, I can just go ahead and square the y, right? If you square y, if you square y, you're going to get, uh, 22 squared, I think that is 484, right? Yep. 484 
plus if you square the second term, 4 times 37 is going to be 148. Plus, uh, you're going to multiply and double them, so it's going to be 88 root 37 over 81. So this is y squared. What you're going to do is you're going to add 1 to this number, okay? When you add 1, you're basically just adding uh, 81 over 81, so you're going to increase this by 81. So we can add this, these two numbers and then just add 81 to it, or we can add 81 to this and then add the resulting number. So it doesn't really matter. So that's going to give us 565 uh, and then plus 148. That should be a 3, a 1, and a 7. Okay, so that's 713 plus 88 root 37 over 81. So this is my value and I'm going to I'm going to square root it and then that's going to give me the answer. All right? So that's going to be uh, 713 plus 88 root 37 over 81. Okay? That's my AC value. Now, I just got AC but I got to find BC now, right? But here's one thing to think about. Instead of trying to go through this mess what I notice here is that you're going to square root this and oh, that's going to be super messy. We could just do the following. AC is actually 2 times Y. Why? Because if you think about the similarity here, we have the 1 to 2 ratio, the smaller one and the larger one, right? So the Y is supposed to be half of AC. In other words, AC is 2Y. Okay, great. That's actually a really good simplification. So AC is 2Y. This shows us that similarity is a better way to go instead of the Pythagorean theorem. But you will get the same answer no matter what, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, but this is kind of safer. So 2Y is going to be, we're just going to double it, right? So let's go ahead and double it. It's going to be 44 plus 4 root 37 over 9. Okay, and again, here you might just use this one, well, we already calculated this one, right? So you might as well say the following too. You can just double this length, right? That's going to be BC. We already found it, didn't we? Okay, so this is my Y squared plus 1, and I can just square root that, right? I can just square root that, when that's going to be 9, as you know, so we might as well just write it like this. Square root of this divided by 9. Now, this is the square root of y squared plus 1. So it's this length here. If you just double it, you're going to get bc. So bc is equal to, bc is equal to 2 times this. So case closed. Awesome. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.